and welcome to my first ever monthly favorites video. I'm so excited to do this. I don't know why I've never done one before because I've always wanted to, but here we are. Um, this is going to be a little bit rambly and I'm going to share a hodgepodge of stuff in no particular order, but the more often I do these, hopefully I'll kind of have like a system and a better way of sharing things. But for today, it's just going to be a free for all. Let's go ahead and jump in. I've got a lot to share. I'm probably going to get a bit chatty, so let's not waste time. Um, first and foremost, let's talk about food items. I'm drinking a really good uh, cranberry vanilla tea right now. It's delish. Okay, have you tried this? It is so good. So it's Ready Whips non-dairy almond milk whipped cream. It says that it's almond milk, but when I tasted it for the first time, I was like, dude, that tastes like coconut. And when you look down here, it does say coconut and almond non-dairy whipped topping. So if you love anything that's like nutty, coconutty or whatever, get on this. It's really good. I actually like it better than regular Ready Whip. Um, on coffee oh, so good also I'm a huge fan of Aldi um, Aldi has so many great gluten-free options for me and this is one of them I would consider this more of like a treat but it's their elevation peppermint stick bar uh, let me show it to you chocolate chocolate it's got a little like I don't know if it's white chocolate or yogurt on the bottom I don't like white chocolate and I don't mind this so I don't know what it is but it's delish it's soft um, if you enjoy peppermint chocolate type things, get on this. It's really good. It's a hit for my boys as well. Um, and if you would like for me to do a Aldi favorite product video, let me know in a comment down below and I can make that happen. All right, food items out of the way. Let me cross it off my list. All right, let's talk about a place I have really enjoyed shopping lately. I talk about it on Instagram all the time. My whole entire outfit from bottom to top is from the store. I've been loving me some Ross. Ross is not new. We all know about Ross. Ross, TJ Maxx, um, Marshalls, all of those type of places. But in the past, I probably rated Ross like lower. I didn't tend to like gravitate towards Ross. I mean, I would go there every now and then, but I just didn't feel like I found as many like great items at Ross. But times have uh, changed and every time I'm in there I find something amazing I'm trying to kind of bulk up my work um, wardrobe now that I'm working we have to wear business casual stuff whenever I'm at the school teaching and I come from wearing like t-shirts and jeans for a good eight years um, so I'm trying to kind of bulk that up and do it on a budget and I've really been able to do that at Ross I find great cardigans this cardigans from there. I love the color of this cardigan In fact, I wear it way more than I should because I love it so much. It's just cozy. It was $14 um, Even this tee underneath here is from Ross. I think it was like $8.99 And then I'm wearing a pair of pants that I love and talk about on Instagram all the time It's made by a company called are they are made by a company called IT. I don't know if it's IT or it um, and they are under $17. They're great jeans. So um, not only have I found clothing from Ross that I've really enjoyed, I found some great shoes. I'm 5'9 and I have large boats for feet. I wear a size 11 um, and it's really hard for me to find shoes that are cute. They fit my feet well and they're not too expensive and I've really been able to do that at Ross. In fact, the other day I left with the prettiest pair of booties that are navy blue suede from Lucky, and I paid under $30 for them. Okay, hello. Um, hold on one second, my nose is running. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that. Um, let's see what else I found there. Oh, 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 my boys have gone to a ton of birthday parties lately, and that adds up. I mean, we were going to some weekends, we had like two birthday parties a weekend. Um, and so that can really like take a big chunk out of the old pocketbook, especially around the holidays. So we've really been able to find some great gifts at Ross for my boys to gift to their friends. And when I come across some things that I really like that, um, are nicer than what I'm paying for it, then I've been kind of like hiding them in a closet for them to have for friends that may have birthday parties throughout the year. So we've had like a little bit of a gift closet going right now. Um, if you are needing to bulk up like your seasonal wardrobe, if you're needing cute shoes, I've also found some really cute comfy like tennies um, at Ross. If you are looking for gifts for your kids for Christmas, home decor. In fact, I'm taking down all of my Halloween stuff right now. I'm in the middle of doing that. And Mr. Skeleton had over here, he was from Ross and he's really cute. And I think he was only like 30 bucks. In fact, when I saw him, I was like, oh, I love you. 
you, but there's no way I'm paying like 50 bucks for you. And then when I saw how cheap he was, he had to come home with me. So home decor stuff, it's a great place. If you find a Ross, just pop in. It's definitely a hit or miss. You're not gonna find great stuff every single time. But if you spend the time kind of like digging through the shelves and looking a little bit, you might find some gems also. So yay, Ross. All right, next on our list is music. So I've really, really loved um, Gregory Allen Isakoff's new album. We recently saw him in concert at the Granada in Dallas. I love concerts at the Granada because it is teeny, teeny, tiny, and it doesn't matter where you're at, you have a great spot. And usually it's standing room only, and it was at this concert as well. And the last time we saw him, he had a huge orchestra with him, and this time it was just like him, his guitar, he had a cello, a bass, and a banjo maybe? Um, and so it was a bit more of a toned down show, but it was amazing. And of course I came home and ordered the vinyl right away and I've really enjoyed it. His whole new album is on YouTube. So you can search Gregory Allen Isakoff and find his music. If he's new to you, go check him out. Just imagine like singer songwriter, smooth yet raspy voice with some cool dudes in the background. Oh my gosh, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I totally forgot to tell you about the violinist. <gasps> oh my gosh. Let's just have a moment for that guy. I hope that if you look him up, you find a video of this guy playing his violin. I've never seen anything like it. I was just like, goosebumps in awe. I mean, Gregory's voice is amazing, but he has this violinist that plays, and that dude, like, he just gets down. Oh, it was beautiful to watch. I will never get tired of this feeling of going either to a show or, I don't know, some kind of thing where you're, like, witness to somebody doing something they're passionate about. What a beautiful gift. It's just such an amazing gift to see a person doing something they're so good at and they, they care so much about and you're sharing in that moment with them and I 100% felt that watching this guy play his violin. It was amazing. Okay, um, music. All right, are you ready to, um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about a guilty pleasure for a second. So a long time ago, I'm talking like maybe seven years ago, I was, I'm getting it ready to show you. I was walking around Barnes and Noble and I saw this book and I was like, oh my gosh, that book looks like a cheesy mess. And then I flipped it over and I read the back and thought, oh, this actually sounds kind of amazing. I'm going to try it. So I bought the book, devoured it in every single book in the series. I read it during the holidays and I remember Christmas with my family and really trying to tell myself, like put down the book put down the book, spend time with your family, spend time with your family. And I just couldn't, I couldn't. There's like what, one, two, three, four, five, six books in the series. This does not include like, there's some spinoff books with these same characters, but six books in like the main series. And I flew through them in like a matter of like uh, a week or so. And I remember my husband taking me around to the different Barnes and Nobles to try to find the other books. Cause at that time, I think there was like maybe four out. Um, I don't, know. I don't know. I was trying to like find all the books so that I could finish the series out and they not all Barnes and Nobles like had each book so it was like a hunt and that was fun too like just kind of going around to try to find the books. So I have this like sweet spot for these books in my heart and I have read the paperbacks um, I don't know three times and then I've listened to the audio versions a couple of times. My library used to have the audio versions they don't anymore um, and so I remember like hours up on the computer editing during fall season when I was really busy as a photographer and just devouring these books when I'm in my office for like hours on end. Well, I decided that I didn't want to be like a book hoarder and as soon as I get rid of books, I wanted just to be done with them. It doesn't matter how much I love them, I just wanted to pass them on. I could not get rid of my Twilight books. I was like, don't let them go. And this series that I'm about to show you. But one day I talked to myself into it and I sent them on to Half Price Books and they were gone. And since then I have missed them, I have longed for them, I have wanted to read them. And one day last month I decided to hop on eBay and just see by chance if somebody has the completed series for me to buy. And they did. And they were reasonably priced for what I got. And that series is The Night Huntress series by Janine Frost. Okay, so let me tell you, I usually am not one to read like super sappy romance books. I do like a good romance, but I want it to be like a smart romance. I want it to have some good character de uh, development. I want the relationship to be like deep and layered and 
I want to think. I don't want it to be like force fed to me. Even when I want a break, there's some books when I just kind of need like a mental break. My mental break books, I even need them to have like a little bit of something, you know? And I'm not one for like speaking of he ripped his shirt open and his rippling chest pushed, pushed against mine and like using words like loins and stuff like that. Like that's just usually not what I'm like pull or gravitate towards. So this is why when I saw this cover, I was like, what? But then when I read the back, I was like, okay. Because I don't typically read books like this. I really don't. And in fact, I will show you some more in a second and you'll be like, oh, but they're so good. Oh, they're so good. There's a reason why I've read them so many times. Um, and I feel like if I tell you the synopsis, you're gonna be like, a weirdo. I'll tell you it a little bit. Let me tell you a little bit. So this, this is the story of Kat. She is half vampire and half human. Her mom got together with the vampire back in the day. They didn't know that he could still make babies, and he could. And a few months later, she had a baby who was half vampire and half um, human. Her mom despised the guy. They got her pregnant. They don't talk. She has, like, this deep hate for vampires, and she raises her child, Cat. Her real name's Catherine, to also hate vampires. So Catherine decides the only way she can right the wrong that is like her vampire side is to hunt vampires. So she goes out to all these like random bars and she try to like, she lures these vampires in and then she stakes them and takes them out. One night she's at a bar and she comes across this vampire who she's planning to take down. His name is Bones. I know, like the name Bones, right? Anyways, his name is Bones. And um, he ends up like kind of fancying her and they have this like hate to love kind of thing going on or is it love to hate one of those going on and their relationship just... It's so good, y'all. Janine Frost has done an amazing job writing these characters. Because remember I said I need it to be kind of smart. I need some things to kind of catch me by surprise. And this is a romance book. It does have some pretty steamy sex in it. So if you're not comfortable with like terminology around that, I would stay away from this. But it's not just like, like Fifty Shades of Grey where it's like sex, 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 sex. Like constantly. I got so tired. I was like, okay, I get it. You have a lot of sex. Blah, blah, blah. This isn't like that. It happens like in a natural way and like not where you just feel like it's being thrown at you where it kind of like progresses in a natural way is what I mean. And um, you really get attached to these characters. There's a lot of action. It's just a very fast pace. If you have a hard time um, staying focused in books, these are for you. So there's seven of them. Um, and whenever you go to start the series, because you're going to read these, right? I mean, hello, if you need a good holiday read, y'all, you'll fly through these. Trust me. This is what you need right here. Get online and search Night Huntress series by Janine Frost and look up, um, like a reading order because there are several and they don't really say which one to start with. So it gets a little bit confusing, but if you Google that, it will kind of list which one you should start with. But I will tell you, um, this is the first one in the series. So start here. You can get on thriftbooks.com. I checked just yesterday. They have used copies of this for like $3.79. Um, you can buy it on eBay and you can also get it on Amazon. If you are an audiobook fan, the audiobooks of these are also very good. And um, recently, I think I purchased this one on audio and it was on sale for like $5 on Audible. Uh, my library used to have them. They don't have them anymore. So there you have it. Guilty pleasure. It makes me so happy. I'm already on... I'm on the fourth book. So I just started these a couple weeks ago and I'm already on the fourth book. It's that good. So whenever I bought that set on eBay, they threw in these. Look at these covers. Oh my gosh. Normally I would not even, wouldn't even touch them. But because I love the other ones so much and it is a Janine Frost book and this is one of the characters that's in the Cat and Bone stories, I might try it. I might try it. I mean, they're here, I'm here, why not? All right, something else I want to share with you um, is a game that I've really enjoyed playing with my boys this last month. I love to go thrift store shopping. This is nothing new. And when I go, I just I head over to the game section. I look at puzzles, I look at games. I kind of have like guidelines on 
what I will purchase and not purchase. I try really hard to get boxes that are in really great condition. I love it when they already come and they're taped because most likely the pieces are already, are all still there. If not, I will open a box and count the junk out of pieces to make sure everything's there before I buy it. So I got really lucky with this one. The box is in great condition. We absolutely love this game and I think this would be a great gift if you're needing a gift idea for somebody or for your own children. It's called Zingo. So um, basically what you do, it's kind of like bingo, get the name Zingo, but it's a little bit more fun. You each get a card like this. This thing slides forward and it has card, these little tiles that pop out. So you look at your card and if you have any of these items like, let's see, bird, kite. Uh, okay, there's bird down here in the corner. I would say bird and whoever says it first wins that tile to put on their card and whoever fills up their tile first wins or their card first wins. Um, it's really fun. I can play it with my three-year-old and my five-year-old and my husband and I even get a kick out of it. We giggle all the time playing this with my boys. So this has been a huge hit and the fact that I got it at a thrift store for like $2.78, even more of a hit. All right, what else did I not show you? Happy Planner. My battery is beeping so I'm gonna make this quick. This is a favorite all the time but more so this last month than ever before because I've had a really hard time like getting my life together. My work schedule is so sporadic being a substitute at the preschool. I never really know if I'm coming or going and I can have my whole entire day planned out when my boys are at school of things I need to take care of and then all of a sudden I get a call to come in and everything I need to take get taken care of gets pushed aside. This is helping me so much. I'm actually doing a much better job of keeping up with the day-to-day -day stuff. I use it for ooh, for the month at a glance to keep up with that, things we've got going on, my sub schedule and all of that, but I've been doing a better job of keeping like a running to-do list every day and then moving things over as I need to. Um, and I can show you how I break things down a little bit more in a separate video. I can even do a review of why I love Happy Planner so much. This is my third Happy Planner to purchase. I have used Erin Condren, I have used Plum Paper, I think is what it's called, and I've used Inkwell Press, and Happy Planners by far are my favorite. Um, but I can do like a Happy Planner video in a separate, uh, separate video if you want. But I gotta go, because my thing is flashing at me and I don't want this to get cut off. But yay for my first ever favorites video! Hopefully you found something that you like. If you read these books, message me and let me know. We have to talk about it. Ooh, they're so good. All right, bye, I'm gonna go.